I've done judo since I was seven years old. I'm a two-time Olympian, and now I'm owner and head instructor of Colton Brown Training Center. I'm Colton's dad, and um, I'm 62 years old. I grew up in a little town in Westfield, New Jersey, small colonial town. I am Colton Brown's uncle. I am his strength and conditioning coach. My name is Derek Brown. First started judo, I did not like judo at all. So at seven years old, I, my father introduced me to the sport of judo. I didn't like it. I didn't like it for a few years until 2004 when I watched the Olympics in Athens on TV. And I said, okay, I can see myself doing that. I wanna do that. You know, I never put pressure on him. I always wanted my kid to, like I said, experience different sports. I never wanted to be one of these dads that sat on the sideline and just, just hounded their kid. Especially not knowing what it's like to be out there themselves. That I'm going to do, and it's something I look forward to doing. So it was positive. Everyone started early in judo in our family. It was almost mandatory that we did something physical. My father was a Marine, uh, the United States Marine Corps participant. He kind of required the type of discipline to be able to keep your body healthy, to be keep your mind healthy, and be able to do some form of self-defense. What I did was, um, you know, I, I looked at at the way he he was, and. Um, he started off good, you know, he was, I'm not gonna say he was the toughest kid out there. Um, and when he started playing judo, um, he actually lost a lot. I said, but Cole, you just got, this guy just took you out in 30 seconds. He goes, I'll see him again. And he'd say with a smile. He had such determination. He has such resilience to being able to, again, bounce back from injuries, bounce back from defeats. You have a lot of people that are very good when they're on top. You start getting knocked down, the true character is when you get back up. And he would get back up, and he would just come at you hard. My, me and my father would go in the backyard and he would run me through workouts at six o'clock in the morning. I'm talking 12, 13, 14 years old, every single day. And those are workouts that I remember. And during those workouts, me and my father would tell me, he said, listen, you're not gonna lose any match because you're not in good shape. Everything that you do, you'll be prepared for. He said, you're, you're not gonna ever enter a competition without being properly prepared. We saw how hard he worked. Even though we would lose, he worked so hard that it was worth it. If he wouldn't have worked that hard, I wouldn't have gone and had to refinance my house. Um, I wouldn't have taken as, the many trips as I've taken with him, but because he put in the work and you saw him, you know, you would hear him. My other house at night, my patio was under my bedroom window and I'd hear him at 10.30 at night, jumping rope and lifting and talking to himself. Um, when you see a kid does something like that, you'll do whatever you can to make his dream come true. In 2013, when he placed at the uh, Miami Grand Prix, and um, there were some of the best players in the world there. Probably 2016, that's when I became really a big part of his training. He was trying to get into the Rio Olympics, and he needed to qualify. At the time, I had access to a facility, the weights, and the knowledge to be able to train him. The decision to go to Japan was a big one. Um, it was very necessary. I credit that trip to a lot of my success. If it wasn't for that trip, I would not have gotten to the first Olympics or the second Olympics. Um, that trip taught me how to deal with an incredible amount of adversity. I was in, an, it was my first time really traveling to a foreign place by myself. It was very, 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 very tough. And we were training for seven, eight hours a day. And I was training at a higher level with a higher level guys than I'd ever trained with before in my life. When he left to go to Japan, he had this, this uh, 
dog tag here. And from the time he left, for some reason I said, I'm gonna wear it. And I wanna, hopefully this keeps him safe. I'm not a big religious person, and I'm not a big, you know, but for whatever reason, that was my, my thing. It was extremely special to be in Tokyo 2020 because everything came full circle. So in 2009, I went to Japan right when I graduated high school. And that was where I fell in love with the grind and what it would take to get there. That was the most important part of my journey for judo. Without that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made any Olympic team. The next generation of Olympic hopefuls, you know, what I, the, the biggest thing that I try to instill in them is to embrace and enjoy the journey. I think that a lot of times when you're trying to achieve something great, we get caught up and it becomes work. So we look at it as work. This is something that you have to do. You have to go through this grueling training. But although the training was grueling for me in Japan, after a couple of weeks, I started to enjoy that. I started to enjoy the process, I embraced it. And I think that you have to remember why you started judo and that's why, that's what I really try to instill in these kids.